Hey everyone and welcome back to the X-Ring. So I am here within the facility at Caracol and I have been given permission to actually take some video inside of the facilities. Uh, specifically, I'm gonna leave different places out of it as far as locations, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at everything that Caracol makes. Now it is made in the UAE, However, they have other locations all over the world. It is a global company. I'll actually show you the map because it's not just one location that you're gonna see these guys. I know they don't have a huge presence in the United States, but they do have a new facility in Idaho. So I think you're gonna be seeing some pretty cool and revolutionary items from these guys. Let's take a look at what they've got. So on the Caracol map here, you're gonna see their location that's up and in operation in the United States. They have one that has to go online this year in Brazil. Their main headquarters and mothership is going to be here in the UAE in the United Arab Emirates. They do have Caracol Germany located in Germany and then you also have Caracol Algeria. So the blue ones are the ones that need to be online this year. You've got India as well as South Korea. So guys, it is not some startup company. This is a company with a lot of history, a lot of real world history. Let's take a look at some of these other offerings that you might see in the near future. So for some of you that are wondering about the name Caracol, it is actually like a bobcat on steroids, okay? Uh, it is native to the UAE and also in South Africa as well, but that is where the name Caracol generates from. All right, so what you're going to see is this is an all-inclusive facility. They're gonna be doing everything in-house. Remember, in the desert, one of the things you have to realize is you have to rely on yourself. It's not like you can contract a place next door or a heavy industrial park to be able to do some, uh, some lifting for you. So they have an R&D workshop. They also have their own prototyping, a full team of engineers for product development and refinement. So that's just coming in the front door. So in any top level manufacturing, you have to have a rapid prototyping division. So back behind me, they started off with a DMG. They actually have a five axis machine here, as well as a Doosan here. There are some things that you need to do quickly and having a rapid prototyping when you come up with an idea is going to be critical in, in order to see if those processes are gonna work or see if it's gonna be a complete failure. So what we'll do is we'll show you some of the machines here. They do have the Aggie Charmé as well, which you've gotta have all the basics to be able to do type rapid type prototyping but it's not cheap, okay? These machines are extremely expensive, especially when you're talking about five axis machines, but this is where all the rapid prototyping is done. So regardless of what kind of access to high-end equipment you have, you still have to have your basic machines, such as your lathes, such as your band saws, such as your bridge ports. And so this room right here is going to be that to help get those parts going before you throw them into something as advanced as the other machines that I showed you. So coming down the hallway, you have engineering of production down this hall. And we're going to move into the manufacturing area. All right, so you're going to see a lot of CNC machines in here. And so before we go into the full manufacturing, they do have a quality control lab. And it is a very exhaustive setup. You have a lot of guys in there that are taking the measurements. Now that's going to be the human quality control. But moving over here, they have their own CMM department. And for those that are not familiar with what a CMM is, it is a coordinate measurement machine. And so a lot of times you'll see Mitotoyas or the Zeiss Contouras or Brown and Sharps. And what they do is they're gonna measure each one of those parts to just critical dimensions, plus minus tolerances on everything. All right, this is their tooling center. This is where they keep track of all the tools. So. When you have a tool that breaks or anything else, logging it in and knowing exactly what your consumption is, is very important. That's why you have a tooling center. All right, so moving on in, we have the material characterization lab. So basically they can characterize all the materials that are coming in. If they need a specific hardness, they need a specific whatever composition, they can do that here. This is gonna be their raw material storage. And, you know, as most companies, especially after COVID hit, having a raw material storage to get you through a year worth of materials is essential. For this company, they have the funds and the resources to be able to store raw materials for three years of production. And that is critical. Many companies learned the hard way during COVID, and that's why a lot of companies shut down during that time, couldn't make any products. 
And this will be taking the raw stock and starting to manipulate them into receivers and everything else you need to make. All right, so imagine taking a raw block of 7075 T6. I mean, we're talking about a solid piece here. And then what, we're, what they're doing is they're machining it. Uh, this is a rifle you guys are not familiar with. I'll just tell you it is a semi-automatic 338. And that's what they're doing in this Hyundai here is machining those into lower receivers. All right, so before we go into what else is in this facility, you really need to understand that I've been to a lot of gun manufacturers, and I'm not just saying this. This is probably one of the most comprehensive, well-organized facilities I've ever seen in my life. It's actually a lot larger than I thought it was going to be. So I'm not going to be able to talk to you while I'm showing you this because I'm doing this by myself, um, but I'm going to kind of walk you through this line here and show you everything that happens. All right, so starting here, contrary to popular belief, most manufacturers of firearms do not make their own barrels. Well, what you're seeing here is the steel. I've got to move kind of quickly because I can't show part numbers, but these are all the barrels, not for the ARs, but for their sniper systems, for the 338. So they start with the raw materials. Here, they actually do their deep boring. They have a double bore here and then a quad bore here. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna take that raw material and basically they're going to bore out those barrels within this machine here. And it's good that it isn't running so that you don't see coolant flying everywhere, but this is a very complex system. So once that item comes from deep boring, then what they're gonna do is they need to chamber it. So they actually have machines with floating tool heads that will actually chamber the barrel so that's going to be the next step that's going to happen here in this machine in this Doosan. now at this point you don't want to finish out a barrel that's not correct so they're going to go ahead and inspect at this point but they still got to get the lands and grooves into that barrel system itself now i'm going to leave some names off of this because this was specifically made for caracol and this is actually what's going to cut the rifling within the barrel itself now, one thing you have to keep in mind, folks, is an older conventional unit, you have to change the tooling out if you want, let's say, a 1 in 10 twist. Having this completely automated, what they can do is if they want to gain twist or if they want to change the twist rate, it's very easy for them to do that with this custom machine that they had made. And then this one right here is going to be the polishing of the incoming parts. So on those barrels, they actually hand lap those barrels. So this gentleman's job here is to actually hand lap the barrels. So it's not like they just have the raw finish. He's actually hand lapping. And then he'll also do some machine lapping while he's punching out. All right, so coming on down, and we're kind of getting off track here a little bit, but they do all of their in-house molding as well. So all of their grips and everything else, that's all molded right here. They're doing all of that themselves. Any type of plastic parts or anything that is injection molded, yep, you're, you got it, doing it in-house. Okay, so at this point, if there is a suppressor that's involved, that's gonna be manufactured as well. But all of these finished rifles, whether it's the sniper rifles or anything else, it has to go through assembly. So this is gonna be your assembly station in here. You'll see the workers manufacturing or putting together all the parts uh, that have been machined. And then from this point, what it's gonna do is keep going through assembly. And guys, I want you to look at this impressive rifle collection of the 338s that are going out. All of these are contract rifles for different military units. There's very few companies you're ever going to see this type of volume. Uh, they move a tremendous amount of rifles all over the world. Uh, these are actually finished good sniper rifles, already outfitted, comes with training, comes with the full kits. These are all outfitted with the Leupold Mark V HDs. All right, guys, so I have been to a ton of gun facilities, and the volume that they're doing and the organization is unprecedented. 
So these are full system kits that are being sold to a nation and all outfitted with suppressors that are made in-house. Check this out. Now these still have to be test fired, okay? So before test firing, what they do is they have a final assembly QC inspection team. And what these guys are doing is they're gonna use go, no-go gauges, they're gonna be doing basically field stripping, they're gonna basically check what the assembly guys did, make sure everything should function perfectly before they waste rounds on ammunition or anything like that. So this would be the sniper final assembly QC. They're gonna check all of that before anything ever goes to the firing range. So now we are going into some polishing, uh, tumbling, things like that, because a lot of times when you tool something, you're gonna need to deburr it. But the reason I'm back here is to show you the heat treat of the barrels. So they do do all the stress relieving and everything that they need to do in this chamber right here. They're actually gonna take it up to a certain degrees, just under a thousand, I'm not gonna be specific on that. Uh, it is under a thousand and then they slowly cool it over eight hours. They also have drying ovens for the Cerakote and they do have Cerakote capabilities in house. They are an authorized Cerakote applicator. And then this gentleman here was doing all the prep and everything. These are the car called the CSRs. And then this is going to be the paint booth for that. All right, so while we're walking down this hallway, these are guns that are going to the firing range. Guys, check out all these 338s, these sniper rifle systems. Let's head to the shooting area. All right, guys, give me an honest opinion. What do you think so far? This should be a really, really good review of how processes should work in manufacturing. Let's go to this shooting area with everyone. All right, so at the very end, all the rifles have to go to CIP. We do not have CIP in the United States. I can't show anything over there, unfortunately, uh, but basically it is the proof house. This is the only one that you're gonna find anywhere in the Middle East. Uh, all the other ones are located mostly in Europe. So I do wanna show you a picture of this map because it is an unbelievable standard. Everything from firing two rounds, two proof rounds through every rifle. They're also gonna do velocity tests. Uh, and this is after Caracol has actually approved it. These are not employees of Caracol. This is actually a proof house or a separate entity. They do everything from ballistic panel testing to up armored vehicle testing. It all happens in the proof house. And they're telling me not to come in. All right, so coming from there, you've got the ammo storage facility. And from here, what we're gonna do is go to the 25 meter range. So the 25 meter range is mostly gonna be their pistol testing. However, the assault rifles do get testing here and they are referred to as assault rifles here. I know we're not in the United States, uh, but what they have to do here is actually do five rounds total. It's gonna be two rounds, and then it's gonna be three rounds of full auto and they have to test the cyclic rate because they have to conform to a certain RPMs on the cyclic rate and that's gonna be about 850 to 900. Anything inside or outside of that window gets rejected. Now this is the part you're gonna like. Once it goes to 25 meter testing, it has to go through 100 yard accuracy testing or 100 meter accuracy testing. Every single rifle that you see here Every gun has to go and get accuracy tested. Not every other one, but every one. It will do a five shot accuracy test on a hundred meter range. Let's go check it out. All right, so this is just for today. Every one of these has to be fired on the hundred meter range for accuracy testing with the exception of the pistols. That's done at 25 meters, including the CMP nines, all of that. This all gets tested on the 100 meter range and they have a st standard that they have to uphold. So of course they're gonna have the Hensholt spotter because it's one of the best spotters in the world, right? You can no longer get anymore. And they are testing at 100 meters. They're actually working on a prototype suppressor right now and you'll be able to see it up here. This was the last group it shot without a suppressor. And what they'll do is they'll be able to see that downrange. All right, so first up is gonna be the CMP9. I just wanted to show you, this is not a SIG MPX. So the SIG MPX uses a roller delay. This is a straight blowback system. And so this is just gonna insert in here like this. 
All right, so when you put it back in, you're actually going to see the back here is probably going to hit on this piece. So the way that you put this together, you're going to put it down, then you're going to pull back on the charging handle slightly. That will allow you to close your push pin. So pretty simple. You have full ambidextrous controls. So you have a bolt release on the right side. So let's say you need to release it. You can do that with the index finger, but you can also lock at the up position, what makes it nice, especially when you're showing that it's clear. So it's ambidextrous. You've got a magazine release here. Looking on the other side, I'm not going to flip the rifle because i got guys over here, but this is going to be your magazine release, and then you've got your standard, like your AR paddle release here for your bolt. You do have your fire control group. This is very similar to the AR controls, the layout. There's nothing to learn, nothing new. Um, as far as the charging handle, it's very unique. I didn't know how I felt about this in the beginning because it is so narrow here, guys. So what you're used to with one hand being able to pull, you're not going to be able to do that. And so it got me thinking if you had a thumb injury or something, but you can still pull it this way, whether you use your palm and your pinky or if you can use your ring finger, so you don't have to have opposable thumbs to make this work. So let's go ahead and shoot it on paper just to see how it does. I'm not going to get crazy with this. So here we go. Okay, so we have a clean piece of paper out here. We're shooting it. It's probably 15 yards or so, not exact. It does use the standard HK magazine. Now, they will be providing these magazines. We're just shooting ball ammunition. So let's go ahead and go hot, just see how it does. We're good? All right. So we'll just go target on the right. Okay, so that's six rounds. We have like four in the center and then two just a little low, but man, it's holding accuracy like this. So what we're gonna do is, and I'll show you this guys, we'll go for the second paper in the middle. We'll just do some three shot bursts or so and see how it works. Okay, so on the eight and a half by 11, we are holding everything with it about six inches. I'll show you the up close of it, but very controllable. Now remember, it is a direct blowback system, so it does have a little more recoil than something like a roller delayed system like an H&K or like an MPX. However, it is very, very controllable, and honestly, it's a nine millimeter. You can definitely control it without any issues. All right, so guys, this is the nine inch version. Very controllable. You can see it as a nice, tiny little package. But what we want to do is try the five and a half inch version. So they have one of those as well. So think of this like the HK, the MP5K. Okay, so you have a nice folding stock and a really tiny little package. I'll shoot a couple on the paper just to see how it does. And then, like I said, remember, I'll show you the grouping. Now we're going to be moving over to the left again. All right, so we're going to try this in the semi-auto mode. Here we go, going hot. Left target. All right, so everything's in the orange, really good grouping. It's very controllable. I really like this short size. You guys know how I am with submachine guns. Let's go ahead and put it in full auto. We're gonna go for the middle because we know everything's in there. And I'll just empty the mag out with what I have left. We are empty, hold on, let's see if we got it. We didn't get last round bolt hold. And so I got some clarification on why we didn't get last round bolt hold. And the reason is we were actually using a genuine HK magazine. The HK magazines, if you have a pile of these and you purchase one of these CMP9s, it's not gonna hold your bolt open. However, the ones that are gonna be manufactured from Caracol will do the last round bolt hold and they will be manufacturing these as well. All right, so coming in on the target guys, this was the first CMP9 with the nine inch barrel. And then we did the full auto, no problem at all. And that was actually with both guns. And then this was gonna be with the five and a half inch barrel. I uh, also wanted you guys to see this cause they do pretty comprehensive sand, freshwater and seawater tests with all of the firearms. So it's pretty impressive on what they do from start to finish with these. So we're not done yet. What we're going to take a look at next is the Caracol. This is the 816. This is a short blowback piston operated system, very similar to an HK416. It, they're saying it is a more refined system because it is a little bit lighter. It is just as robust and you do have an adjustable gas system here. 
So in the center, you actually have your neutral position. If you just slightly push the button and turn it over, that's gonna be for adverse, and that's gonna be when the rifle gets really dirty or if it's really cold or anything like that, where you need extra gas into the system. Now, if you press it and go back to the center and then the other direction, this is gonna be for suppressed. And it's pretty easy to tell because it does have three dots on there. So for suppressed fire, we don't wanna overgas the system. Or if you have really, really hot rounds, you could tone, tone down the gas a little bit. I'm not gonna take it apart, but basically you press it, rotate it 180 degrees, pull it out. Then you'll have a piston system under here, very similar to what you've seen and know from the HK416. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot it on paper. I'm not shooting far or anything like that. Um, it does come with the iron sights. These are very reminiscent of the old SIG 516 sights that just kind of came with every rifle. And remember, they're doing all the polymer in-house for the grip and everything. They're gonna be doing the stock in-house. So let's go ahead and shoot a couple rounds down range and see how she does. All right, Caracol 816. And what we'll do is we'll shoot on the middle one first. Let me see how this thing kind of points first. Let me make sure my dot's on bright enough. And let me extend the stock just a hair. And we'll just do a couple up down. So here we go. So I was planning on height over bore, and I think this one's actually dialed in pretty good. So I'm just going to aim spot on. So here we go. Nope. So I'm about an inch high on everything, so I think this needs to come down just a little bit, but that's okay. Same thing. I think it's doing pretty well. It feels good, feels good in the hand. It does have a little bit of weight. If you're used to a direct impingement system, then using a piston regardless is gonna be a little heavier. It is never gonna be as light as a direct impingement because you have all of those rods up here. So let's go ahead and switch it to full auto. We're gonna to go to the paper on the left, just a couple short bursts. So here we go. Very, very slow cyclic rate, slower than what I'm used to. Cause I could probably single this if I wanted to. Yep. So cyclic rate is a little slower than what I'm used to with a 416, but not bad. We'll lay into it for about three or four shots. Yeah, not bad. Now I'm not gonna burn up all their ammo, so let me go ahead and clear this. All right, we are clear, clear. Very soft feel, does really well. What I'll do is I'll show you the targets. Very easy to control, but the cyclic rate's a little slower than what I'm used to, and the gas is on the standard position. All right, so it wouldn't be a good video if we did not have a precision rifle section, because that's what we do, right? So what we're going to review next, this is the, C the Caracol, the CSR-308. And what I like about it is it uses the SR-25 pattern magazines. You can use the Magpul, the AR-10 mags, and it works perfectly well inside of it. It does have a magazine release like you're used to on an AR which believe it in a way is pretty nice because in a lot of these precision rifles, you'll have a tab down here and just moving it or carrying it, your magazine will drop. So magazine releases on the right side. You also have one on the left that's ambidextrous and you also have your safety here. That's also a really large lever, very easy to manipulate. Another thing we want to take a look at is the stock. What I wanted you guys to see about this stock is it is completely toolless. I don't need any tools for it. And if I need to adjust, the height of the butt pad, all I have to do is just squeeze these two tabs here. Now it does have a built-in monopod here. So what you can do is just screw it in or unscrew it to help you with height. Now you're like, well, that's too slow. Well, if you press down on this, that is your quick deploy on it. And that is gonna be pushing in on the double setup. So let me go ahead and get that back into where it belongs. Let me go ahead and get it out of the way. And then what we're gonna look at next is this portion right here. If you look at this chassis, what you're going to see is this black portion coming into the back of the stock. This is actually kept in place by a little retainer, and if we take this and pull it back, that will push down the lever. Now this is a spring-loaded piece, and what it will do is adjust our length of pull. So I don't need any type of tools or anything else to adjust this. I just put it where I want it, 
I can click it back into place and we are good. Now we do have movement on this as well. We have three positions on the height and if I had to ding one thing, I know that I'm pretty specific on the cheek riser height. And only having three positions, I think the gaps are gonna to be too large. So it's one of the things that I'm gonna to mention to them is that I feel like that should actually have like six positions or eight positions because that's a pretty big stretch there if you only have three. As far as the bolt system itself, this is a folding stock. So we can close it by pressing the button on the side. And then as far as the bolt and cleaning, there is a tab up here at the very top. We just press it and we have a three lug system. Now, I don't know if this is a true 60 degree or if it might be a 40 plus degree type system, but either way, it is a nice short throw on the bolt. Very, very smooth. Uh, this one does have a lot of wear on it. This does have a hen sold scope on it, and we're gonna shoot it at 100 yards and see how we do. Unfortunately, I can't set a camera up down range, but I'll show you what the results are on the digital screen here. We are gonna be shooting live ammunition. We'll be shooting Lapua, and we'll be shooting the Centerfire 308 with 167 grain ammo. So here we go. It's very smooth. Okay, so this rifle does have a two-stage trigger, and I like the trigger, but it is a little heavy. I do know that I had asked the powers that be about such the heavy trigger, and they said it was because it is a military rifle and the military requirement does require it to have a heavier trigger. So it's not gonna be adjustable down to an ounce or anything like that. All right, so let's give it a run. We're gonna go ahead and open the bolts. Let me put the safety on. They get in a good position here, and we'll be able to see what we have in just a few minutes. All right. Here we go. Very smooth action. Trigger is a little heavy. Got about one inch of dispersion there, and I know that's not me. Maybe it was the cold bore. Okay, so a nice little cluster out there. I mean, it's not a quarter inch gun. Uh, I think the actual group size measured 0.74, which is perfectly acceptable because we have that sub MOA that we're looking for. Now, I'm sure you could tune it with better ammo and everything else, but all in all, it shoots and feels very, very well. I have no complaints about the rifle. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's see if we can get a 338 under our uh, fingers. Okay, so for this next one, this is actually going to be a pretty cool treat. This is the Caracol, the CSA 338. Yeah, you heard that right. This is a 338 Lapua semi-automatic. It does have a left side charging handle here. Uh, you can pull straight back on that and we're gonna see how this does. It is topped off with Loophole Mark V HD. Uh, it does have the Magpul, the heavy stock, but it's, uh, it's a good stock for this, uh, this situation. And it also is an adjustable gas system. We have removed the suppressor off of it at the moment, uh, so we're just going to shoot a couple rounds out of this just to see how it does, and uh, we'll see what the group looks like. All right, guys, I'm going to make this real quick because my battery is almost dead. Uh, we're just going to shoot on paper very, very quickly. Hopefully, I don't lose this. I just need like three rounds, four rounds. That'll be good. All right, guys, so we had some camera difficulties, so you'll notice the difference in the color and everything else, uh, but this is going to be a treat here. Guys, this is the Caracol, the CSA. 338 and that's right we are shooting the 338 Lapua uh, round and we are shooting Lapua ammunition so this is a really lightweight package I don't have the actual weight on this but I have sniper rifles that are heavier than this okay it's still probably around 20 21 pounds uh, with the optic and all but it's still not bad so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about it really quick I'll give you some up closes of it but it's not like a standard AR-10 setup. Right here is going to be pretty much your bolt release, your safety is here, and then you've got a dust cover right here on this side, but this stays 
Uh, it's a little unique. And then on the left side, we have a left side charging handle. Now there's actually a dust cover in there as well. So you don't have a big open slit for sand to infiltrate to on the left hand side. So what we're gonna do is just shoot a couple rounds. I'm not gonna get crazy or anything. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the charging handle to the rear. I wanna push down on this and that locks my bolt open if I can hold it far enough, yeah, like that. Now what I can do is I can insert the magazine and then from here, I'm just gonna lift up on this bolt and we are hot and ready to go other than the safety being on. So let me go ahead and find something and get a target going. That should be good right there. So here we go. Let me put some eyes on because the brass could hit this. And safety first anyway. All right, here we go, going hot. All right, so the, the recoil is super, super soft on this. Let me try like two shots just to see. And the grouping's actually not bad. It's probably about three quarters of an inch. All right, because this is still in its prototype stages, we're not gonna keep shooting it. Uh, it was a pleasure to be able to shoot it. I will tell you that the target down there, it's less than three quarters of an inch at 100 meters. So not bad at all. If they'll let me take the scooter down there, I might show you the actual target uh, because it was pretty impressive for this 338 with very, very soft recoil. Feels actually softer than a bolt gun 308. So this is the actual grouping right here. Not this one, these were stray shots from other groups. Uh, but that was actually what we did with that AC-338. Now I will tell you, they have this figured out right. They actually have a scooter that you can go down range with and it's electric and it's pretty darn cool. So what they're doing is they are getting ready to go into packaging right now because this is gonna go into packing. All those rifles you saw right there have to go into the finished goods store. Packing takes up the most space, it does, because you have the foam, you have the cardboard, and you also have to verify all those serial numbers and check it out. Just the inventory, it's just crazy. All right, so last but not least is product maintenance and services. They do have a three-year warranty on all of their rifles, but let's say you have, and you might, some people might say, well, why isn't a lifetime warranty? You have to realize how many military units there are and what they have is for the first three years, there's no issues, but once after about three years, they need to come in for cleaning, maintenance, or service, then they will maintain those for them. After the three years, then they'll have to pay for a contractor services to repair some items that have might have broken. So that's what this whole division is. This building right here is actually where Caracol started. This was the original building itself. And so that's it with maintenance and service. Now, when it leaves here, once it leaves this position, it has to go all the way back over to where it started for shooting and verifying accuracy. It has to go through the full QC program. And what's really cool is they have this reception area. So when they have a customer coming in to possibly look at the facility, they pull up straight into the driving because you got to remember it is so hot out here and then they can hold any type of meetings or anything they need to from this location. All right, I hope you enjoyed that review of the facilities at Karakal in Abu Dhabi. It is an unbelievable facility. Everything is very streamlined, and these guys were very, very welcoming to show me every step of the way. And honestly, I've been to a lot of other gun manufacturing facilities, and nothing seems to be as streamlined and as smooth as this. While you do see some bigger buildings and things what you don't have is where you've got to leave and go out a mile to go to the range everything can be done here and everything is done in-house a lot of times in the united states you also have a lot of outsourcing okay that's just the way that it's done just because you can't maintain that facility to be able to make all the parts for production so i do want to give a sincere thank you to everyone at caracol everyone from 
Hamid, to Salem, to the people that just made this happen, because like I said, I have extended my stay. I'm actually going to stay here quite a few more days. I was supposed to be flying out tonight, uh, but the powers that be said, let's go ahead and stay a little bit longer. So I'm going to be here for at least another week or so. So it's been a great time. I'll try to get you some more footage, but hopefully you're enjoying this gun content. So you guys take care. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.